Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is Word of Testimony. Beloved family, our text says, And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they love not their lives even unto death. Revelation 12, 10-11 As King Jesus was glorified, so will we be glorified. As King Jesus suffered, so must we suffer. Since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same way of thinking, for whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, so as to live for the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer for human passions, but for the will of God. 1 Peter 4, 1-2 Religion taught me that once I gave my life to Christ Jesus and submit my will to the will of God, then life will be all good. There will be no more pain, no more suffering. God will bless my going out and my coming in. But as I came closer into relationship with the Father, I discovered that this was not the full truth. I thought that only the wicked suffer and that the righteous ones who love God avoid suffering. After all, God is all-powerful, right? And we are his children. So why wouldn't he defend us at all costs and rescue us from accusations of the enemy, from hurt, harm, and danger? Through my journey with King Jesus, I've learned that God doesn't always pull us out of trouble. He sometimes proves himself in the midst of of trouble. How else will I know that God is good if I don't experience bad? That God saves if I don't need to be rescued? That God is a healer if I'm not afflicted? Yes, I can hear with my ears as faith comes by hearing, but faith grows deeper when I can experience what I've heard through my life. After Satan got permission to strike Job with sores on his body, Job was sitting in ashes, scraping his sores. Then his wife said to him, Do you still hold fast your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You speak as one of the foolish women would speak. Should we receive good from God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this Job did not sin with his lips. Job 2, 9-10 See, I've come to learn, family, that all of us have to be tested. It is by our test that we get a testimony. Your test is different from mine, but they have the same goal of proving our faith in God. When afflicted, how do you feel? Do you feel like cursing God or praising Him? Yeah, it's easy to praise God when the kids are acting right, the spouse is tight, and our money is right. But can we praise God when there is more bills than money and life tastes like vinegar, not honey? James 1-2 puts it this way, My fellow believers, when it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulties, see it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. For you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs a power within you to endure all things. And then, as your endurance grows even stronger, it will release perfection into every part of your being until there is nothing missing and nothing lacking. James 1, 2-4, the Passion. This is the reality of kingdom believers and royal family of King Jesus Christ. See, I used to think that only suffering and adversity happen to wicked or bad people. But that's not the case at all. The world wants us to believe this lie. No, God uses the world to test us so that through the test we can have a testimony. Why? Because of our opening verse. 
We shall defeat and conquer Satan by the blood of the Lamb. That's King Jesus' part, and he's already done that. He gave his blood for you and me to save and redeem us. Nothing but the blood. And listen, family, don't miss this. By the word of our testimony, yes, you and I, that's our part. And we are still fulfilling that day by day. Oh, listen, your testimony is yours and yours alone. It's your personal weapon against the enemy. So get it and use it. Satan, the accuser, who constantly accuses us, skin for skin, he says, all that a man has, he will give for his life. But stretch out your hand and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to your face. Job 2, 4 to 5. Now substitute the word man for your name, substitute it for my name. This is his accusation against us, that we will break faith. Beloved family, a testimony is still being formed. Mine is still in the works. Oh yes, I have other testimonies about how good God is and how God has made a way out of no way. How he picked me up and turned me around and placed my feet on solid ground. But I'm facing some of the biggest adversity and tests of my life. And it is being led by the accuser himself. But God. I give you these seeds every morning that God has given me to plant. I count it a privilege to do so. But the enemy doesn't like it at all. He wants to silence me, to silence the word of God and the word of my king. Oh, I started these messages any way you slice it from my book two years ago as a result of a fiery test I was going through. I was at a crossroad and chose to stand on the word of God. But now the enemy has turned up the fire seven times harder than it was before. But I am confident of this, that the Lord God will deliver me from the fiery furnace. But even if he doesn't, I will praise the name of my God. I will not break faith and hold on to my testimony. Go through your test. Stand on his promises and on his word and arm yourself with your testimony because that is what you will use as we join the lamb to defeat Satan, evil, and overcome the world. Much love.